Special coverage on GBH Radio, on Facebook Live, and the rest of our social media platforms. Thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Joe Matthew in Boston as we assemble the full GBH political team. This debate night here with Ed Markey and Kevin O'Connor debating the issues as you heard live. And now is our chance to dig deep into the issues with some of the best minds in local politics, including the moderators themselves. Jim Browdy, Marjorie Egan, you've had a long day already. Thanks for joining us this evening. And thanks for a great debate. Where to begin, guys? Uh, there's a lot to talk about here as we open with regard to style and substance. I'd like to begin with style because you guys uh, had to deal with a socially distanced uh, event this evening. And it's one that you guys obviously uh, had a chance to discuss with the candidates here, but it's not easy doing this in another room, across the room with masks on. Marjorie, congratulations. Did anybody win? Oh, it's hard to tell, you know. When Are you allowed to say that? Well, I, I, I really couldn't say because uh, you're so busy making sure things move along and ask your questions and to keep on top of things. I, I couldn't tell who won, but it was a weird debate. You How mentioned come? usually when we do debates, Jim and I are sitting, you know, at a table and the candidates are on either side. We, we, we did the marquee debate with Joe Kennedy uh, mm -hmm. in February before this whole thing happened. And it was much more intimate and it was easier to communicate with the, with the uh, uh, candidates. You're looking up at a little screen and they're in a different room from you. And it's, I think it's, Harder. I don't know, Jim. Didn't you think it's harder when they're not sitting next to you? I don't think it's hard. I don't know if it's harder. Be hi, Joe. First of all, and thanks for having us. Good to see you. It was. It's different. I mean, we. I think our trademark debate, Marjorie and I have been doing them for a couple of decades, is <laughs> two candidates, sometimes three, and we sit around the table. There's no right. podiums. There's no formality. As you know, there's no time deadlines. We hope people are going to be respectful, and we try to cut them off if we need to. Uh, so it was harder. Having said that, I was dreading the fact that they weren't in the studio. You were? It, I was, because I, it, personal, con you know this, having somebody physically with you right. is a totally different interview mm -hmm. than interview or debate than if they're uh, long distance, even in normal times, I should say. Having said that, I think it worked out, to be candid, far better uh, than I thought in terms of Interesting. Uh, again, even though it's much harder. Well, we know the format harder matters. for them to, when you don't have Absolutely it does. conduct with your opponent. Yeah. We're looking at it happen with the presidential debates. You know, there's a, first you get the one with the podiums, then they're walking around the stage like Phil Donahue with handheld mics. Then maybe mm. they're going to be sitting on stools or something or, or at a table, uh, shoulder to shoulder, like you guys yeah. have done in the past. They all bring out different sides of the candidates and different candidates shine uh, more depending on the format. Marjorie, uh, Ed Markey's done a lot of these. They, he just did one with you, as as Jim mentioned, yep. with Joe Kennedy. Uh, was one candidate more at ease, more adaptable tonight? You know, I thought they both seemed at ease. Kevin O'Connor is a, is, a, is, a, is a skilled attorney. He's been a lawyer for a long time. Ed Markey has been in Congress for ages, probably done dozens of debates over the years. So I thought they were both uh, they both seem relaxed and they both seem um, ready to go. I, I don't think I was surprised in anything particular that they said. As That's a pretty said, big compliment, Jim. If you're going up against a 40 year veteran on Capitol Hill, you've never been in a debate like this before. That's a pretty nice review. Yeah, I think, first of all, I, I'm assuming it was his first debate because it's first run for office. And I have to be yeah. candid with you, Joe, when you're asking me these questions, when Marjorie was talking to the candidates, I was watching the Patriots game, so I don't know what <laughs> in those. First I honest guy know, around I, I'm sure Marjorie did a fine job. The heck's the score, you know, anyway. You know, I think they're losing, aren't they? <laughs> O'Connor <laughs> comes into a debate like this, any Republican does, doesn't matter how good you are, with such a colossal disadvantage. What are there, like 12 Republicans in Massachusetts? Right. Charlie Baker is more popular with Democrats than he is right. with Republicans, and so... When you're uh, Kevin O'Connor, you have to come into this debate saying, I can't win even if I win every single Republican vote in Massachusetts. In fact, if that's all I do, I get crushed. You have to uh, reach out to the middle, the unenrolled, who, as you know, Joe and Marjorie knows, 
there are more unenrolled people than there are Democrats than either combined. Yeah. And I think that O'Connor was struggling with, which any Republican would, with, uh, yeah, I support Donald Trump, but I don't support a lot of his policies. Uh, that's a hard road to hoe. And a Democrat in the state, particularly a long-term incumbent, I think walks in with an advantage. Having said that, for Kevin O'Connor, for his first debate, I thought he did quite well. It's just in this state, when you're running with Trump as baggage, which you are, uh, you have a really steep hill to climb in a debate or in an election. Let me just say one other thing. I saw your poll before we came on. The mm. media's coverage of this race has been abominable. You uh, think so? Republican <laughs> nominee. Uh, there is virtual. Um, I believe we're the only person on our radio show, uh, 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 and you may have done it too. Yeah. Kevin O'Connor even on before his own primary. Maybe I'm missing one. Very little print media coverage and mm -hmm. many of the party. And you know, if a Charlie Baker can be governor, then a Republican. You know, there was Scott Brown not too long ago. They deserve far more coverage for this race, even if it's well, not here, here. So and I like congratulate Kennedy you both. You. Congratulations on making this happen. I mean, that's my God. It was the only, if there weren't for you guys, there would be no debate. And most people would not know who exactly was even running for Senate for crying out loud. Well, we're thrilled um, to do it. Let, so one of the issues we've not gotten to yet, we've been picking through a lot of these while well, I suspect you guys were, were packing up your toys in the, uh, in the debate hall there. Uh, but was packing the court. We haven't talked about the Supreme Court yet this hour. And, and it was pretty meaningful what was said. We'll listen to the candidates very quickly and have... Uh, you both uh, talk about this. This was this was something that you guys asked him about, the, the mm -hmm. idea of adding justices to the court, assuming, of course, that President Trump's uh, nominee is confirmed. Here is Ed Markey in his response. It is very much uh, necessary for us in uh, America uh, to repeal the filibuster and to begin a discussion of enlarging the Supreme Court in order to make sure that what the Republicans have done uh, does not wind up in a in a fundamental change. So we added also uh, getting rid of the filibuster. This is Kevin O'Connor. Court packing is a terrible idea. It's been discredited by everyone. Justice Ginsburg said it was a terrible idea. No one of common sense thinks that 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 Senator Markey's idea is good. And even the Biden campaign thought it was ill advised. So he's outside the mainstream of his own party, let alone common sense. This is an important disagreement, Marjorie. We're talking about hearings starting in a week in Washington. Right. Well, I, I think you guys talked, I was listening to you guys before we came on and, and, and Carrie Saldo was talking about pr Trump's uh, popularity in certain areas of the state around Worcester, et cetera. But I think one of the things that, that's difficult for, for Kevin O'Connor is uh, a lot of Massachusetts voters are not where I mean, Charlie Baker's done really well because he's a moderate Republican. Um, Scott Brown, the last guy who won the Senate and a shocker to everybody when he beat Martha Coakley, mm -hmm. was a, a more moderate Republican. Um, he, he's talking about not having the court expand, and, and, and I get why he says that. On the other hand, he's talking about justices whose previous writings and whose writings on the Supreme Court are kind of out of sync with where Massachusetts is. Uh, so... I, I think that's kind of weird. He says he's, a, he's not a Trump Republican and he disagrees with them on a lot, obviously, tonight. But I think when he's talking about the court in Massachusetts, where there are so few Republicans, I think it may be scary to people to think about what a 6-3 conservative court could mean mm -hmm. down the road. And I'm not sure that many Massachusetts voters want that. Therefore, Jim, Ed Markey sounds... Uh mainstream in Massachusetts. And I, we should note, by the way, that O'Connor supports age limits, not term limits, but age limits on the court. Yeah, I, I, the, I think Markey's uh, line, it took a while to get there, when he said was that the Republicans are the ones who are packing the court hmm. because of their decision, obviously, not to do anything with Merrick Garland, and then push Amy Coney Barrett in violation of their, whatever their principles were, a hand full of uh, years ago. And there's so much anger. This is another uphill climb for Kevin O'Connor. If this were an academic discussion, I think a lot of Democrats would have concern about adding seats to the court. But there's so much rage about what has happened uh, by the Republicans and Barrett that probably a lot more people are open to adding seats, even though Joe Biden apparently isn't. 
uh, than uh, than in normal mm -hmm. times. And I should say, you know, that that uh, Ed Markey went out of his way. We asked him about twelve different ways. Yes, to be critical of his nominee, who has different positions on a lot of issues, including the Green New Deal. And not once did he take the bait. He was yeah. very respectful of Vice President Biden. I guess that says something about unity here. Marjorie, we've uh, had a couple of polls going internally here in our virtual Zoom studio, including which of the following is the biggest factor in your vote? National issues, state and local, political party, character and experience, or none don't know. National issues, far and above. And of course, this is a Senate race. 72% to state and local, 14%. Only three people uh, picked political party. So it sounds yeah. like you guys were asking the right questions. This is going to be decided on uh, response to COVID, on the Supreme Court, and feasibly on climate change. You also talked about the stimulus to a, a, to a certain extent. That will decide this race. Yeah, and I, and I think as I said before, I mean, I'm not, the, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a journalist and a, and a reporter and a radio host. I'm not a political strategist. But again, it, it's hard, I think, in Massachusetts um, when you are with the president who's so unpopular here on a lot of these national issues that you just mentioned, I think, I think it perhaps was not the best moment for Kevin O'Connor when he kept talking, calling about, talking about the Communist Party in China, you know, just days after we have the president of the United States who has been kind of playing with matches with mask mm. wearing and social distancing for six months now, mm. and then he gets sick himself. I think to a lot of Americans, uh, his handling of the virus has is, is not been very good. And now uh, he's he's got it himself. So that seemed a little, that I, I don't know that that, I'm, I'm not sure whom that resonated with. Can I echo, uh, Joe, what Marjorie said? Yeah. You know, it's interesting, O'Connor came in deciding that he was willing to part ways with President Trump on the environment, on abortion, as Marjorie said at the end. Dreamers? If I were a Republican strategist, I would say the one issue you have to separate yourself from the president on is his handling of this coronavirus mm. has been an unmitigated disaster from beginning to end. So if I were to uh, uh, pick a bone with any of, uh, of uh, Mr. O'Connor's answers, I would say the one where he said it's an incomplete grade. Yeah. I think the grade is in and uh, President Trump has failed to protect the American people. Uh, in virtually every way. And that's probably going to cost them a few points. We asked our assessment our, of the candidacy. The, the, the other poll question we asked our listeners and viewers about, Jim, sorry for interrupting, is do you oh, think okay. President Trump's hospitalization, to your point, will affect the 2020 vote? If so, who will it favor, Trump or Biden? 28% said it will not affect the vote. 21% said, yeah, it'll favor Biden. Only 7% said it'll favor Trump. We only have time for one more here for both of you, and I'd love for you to both take a swing at this. You've been preparing for this debate for quite a while, and it dawns on me here that the whole ground shifted under your feet right before you conducted this debate, and that goes for the candidates as well. What we saw on Friday was something we'll never forget. It evolved through the weekend to be this incredible passage that stole the nation's attention and created a new backdrop for your debate. So I wonder, uh, Marjorie, how did it change the feel, the environment, and maybe even your questions tonight? Well, the first question was about masks. And I think that it did change everything because what you learned is that a president who has not been wearing a mask, but who was surrounded by people that were supposedly tested for the coronavirus, got coronavirus anyway. So I think it made us much more cautious tonight in where we were sitting. I mean, Jim and I had a big piece of plexiglass uh, between the two of us and we were very far apart and the candidates as we said at the beginning were in different rooms so mm -hmm. i think the dangerousness of this virus really has hit home to a lot of people over this weekend did it create a sense of urgency jim it does something in the air it changes the way people communicate and it also makes so many issues that would otherwise joe be high on people's list way down the GBH poll, whatever it was, a month or so ago on a whole variety. Was it in the mayor's race? Oh, yeah, the mayor's race. And Boston is a microcosm. What do you care about? Coronavirus, high numbers, high double digits, virtually everything else barely on the screen. And that's why we started with it and spent a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. When 200,000 people are dead and the president is this cavalier about it, this is where the action is. What a thought. 
There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, do you have a sense of what's going to make news tomorrow? Can you do that on your own debate, Marjorie? Uh, I, I think that, we were, that brilliant moderators <laughs> and contentious That's right. candidates. That's what I would they say. They made news themselves. Sorry. I do think coronavirus. I think the exchange on coronavirus will certainly be in, 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 in played heavily in the stories in tomorrow's paper, I think. In closing, I don't know, Annie, if we can get that poll back. I had one more question on there, which was about poll uh, voting timing. We're doing this, by the way, in the middle of an election mm. uh, with our mail-in voting uh, taking place. I don't know if it's possible to spawn that. I wish I was smart enough to do it. But uh, that, of course, is another factor here. Here we are uh, with our final poll. When will you cast your vote? Pretty simple. My ballot is already in the mail. Zero tonight which says a lot about the people who decided to learn more about the issues. I will mail my ballot, 38. I will vote in person, 45%. Um, we just have uh, a minute left here. Marjorie, does mail-in voting also uh, change the backdrop for this election? Some people have already decided and are watching the Patriots. You're yes, going to regret that question, about, Joe. Go ahead. Come on now. I, I'm not worried at all about fraud. I'm worried about someone uh, didn't didn't fill it out, didn't cross it to your dot and I, they're both yeah. disqualified. That's what I'm worried about. I am voting in person. I think anybody who can uh, should, should vote in person because I think it's, it's too big of an election to start this whole new thing in such a huge way all across the country. But Jim, it also means that people decided who to vote for before they saw President Trump go to Walter Reed. Yeah, uh, uh, Jennifer Becerra on our radio show today said that's a real problem with early voting. Early voting is to recommend it. It's got a lot of problems with it because as we've learned in the last just week, look what's happened literally over seven days. So uh, uh, I'm with Marjorie. I'm concerned about the timing and the post office and that sort of thing. Yeah. But if you're going to vote by mail, the, the solution is to do it early. And if there's a drop box near you, drop box. dump it in. Jim Browdy, Marjorie Egan, great job tonight. And thank, thank you for you. staying up just a little bit longer with us here Thanks. in our special coverage of the 2020 Massachusetts Senate race. I'm Joe Matthew. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for your smart questions this evening and helping to make all of this work here on the radio and on our social media platforms. Thanks to all of our panelists, the full GBH News political team and our producers, Annie Schreffler, Andrew Masua, and Karen Marshall. We'll see you back here on the radio tomorrow on GBH 89.7.